Okay, Ryan, you had a huge year last year, um, very close to winning the Worlds, the under-23, you got the Irish Nationals, the under-23 time trial, but had the best time um, and, and some other results. So looking back, how do you how do you see that season? Yeah, it was a pretty good one. It's, it always sounds a lot better when someone reads it back to me, but yeah, it was, I was really happy with the year and I just kind of was just taking it as it came, really. It wasn't really, I don't know, I wasn't really paying much attention. It was all a bit of a blur and then it's only when I look back that I kind of realised that it, was actually, that wasn't too, it wasn't too bad. Mm. What does that do for your confidence? I think you were saying before, for example, the Nationals Road Race, you weren't terribly confident that you would win it yourself and then you did do that. So how much does that bring you on mentally when you you know have achievements like that? I don't know. I'm not really, I wouldn't say I'm the most confident guy in the world. I just think... Uh, kind of just base my expectations on what I know I'm, a, I'm able to do based on training and stuff um, but yeah it, it, it was obviously it was obviously a little confidence but it's just the way it kind of worked out it was just a race that suited me really well and the way just the way, way in which I won as well but so I wouldn't consider myself confident until I could do something that I didn't think I was capable of doing type thing mm. so um, yeah the world's result, I mean, obviously it, it couldn't have been any closer. Uh, did you find yourself afterwards replaying that in your mind? Like, yeah, I had weird. many, many sleepless nights after that. <laughs> I was, yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was pretty disgusting to be fair. Um, yeah, I, I literally went over every every corner, every straight in my head thinking, where could I have found half a second? And to be honest, I don't think I could because if I pushed any hard in any of the corners, I'd have decked it. Um, and if I'd have gone any hard in the streets, I'd have blown up. Yeah. But it's just uh, at the end of the day, I've said it before. Like the best guy did win. I mean, we, everyone rode the same condition. No one had an easy. No one had an easy TT. It's just uh, I was, obviously wasn't good enough on the day to win it. Sure. But I say it, it, it definitely put me out there. Like uh, I certainly became. I was it firmly put myself on the market type thing. I, I think a lot of people like stood up and realised, oh, maybe this guy's all right. We can maybe watch him for the future. But I. I at the same time, I was only 19. I mean, oh, sorry, I didn't just turn 20. Um, I don't even. I didn't even want to turn pro last end of, end of last year. Like, um, I don't really know of any 19-year-old, 20-year-old pros. So I'd rather spend another year in this team, learning the trade. Still, like last year was just a, like, almost like an apprentice type year. Now this year, I want to focus more on getting results and establishing myself as a road racer, not someone who can just finish in a bunch every day. I want to kind of like push for. The, to make it to the finals and to, to do something in the race. Yeah, I mean, obviously the engine is there. You can see it in the TTs and, and results like the time trial and Tour of Britain, etc. Um, what do you need to do to develop? Is, is it more explosiveness in, in the bunch, or is it's it just, just naturally with age you're going to get stronger anyway? It's a bit of everything. I mean, it's naturally with age you're going to get stronger. Um, knowing how to ride in the races, like last year was my first year at this level. And uh, at the start, it was like, oh, geez, I can't do this. This is this is really hard. <laughs> and I feel like I didn't finish a fair few races last year. And then it's kind of like, you put your head down, keep working. You get used to it and you learn what to expect. And I learned so much last year and, and how to ride these races and what's normal and what's not. And uh, it, it taught me a lot on how to be a bike rider. And this year, I'm hoping I can put that experience to some good use and put myself in the right position, in a, a position where I'm able to do something in a race. How was your winter? Long. <laughs> uh, I spent a lot. Of, I spent all the time, all winter doing the track work with the Irish Irish team. Mm. So I flew all over the world um, with them. Uh, I didn't know. I didn't really go to plan in any of the races we went to. We went there, went to each one, hoping we could do get a good ride. And at the end of the day, we just didn't. We just weren't good enough, really. And then kind of got. Then I uh, got to the Worlds in Paris and kind of ran out a little bit of steam, really, because I've been to South America five times in like, the last 11 months. So I was, uh, when I, I think when I got there, I was a little bit, I think I was, it was just a bit like, I just want to, I want to ride the road now. But um, I, I went there and gave it my absolute best because it was still a, a huge goal of mine. And I, I really wanted to do a good ride for the team there. I like, the amount of hard work they'd done. And I was genuinely really disappointed that I couldn't make a medal ride off like I did last year. At the same time, the field was a little bit stronger this year. I think my ride was just pretty much the same as last year, but I think considering the, the winter I'd had, it was, I was pretty happy with it at the end of the day. I mean, in the last uh, 
the last three or four World Championship events, I've never been outside the top ten, so it's not too bad for you. Mm, absolutely. Were you part of the the guys that crashed in in, in the end of the team pursuit? Yeah, yeah. I was the uh, person caused it. Oh right, okay. How did that happen? Well, we done a whole. We've done it. We we finished the. We were coming up to finish the uh, yeah. final straight, and uh, I was completely fisted. Yeah. So I was like, I was the one who swung up first, but I purposely because it was an outdoor track, I didn't want to swing up too far because the guys would come under me and they'd had they'd be fresh to kick through for the line and I get dropped. So I purposely didn't swing up enough, and then the guys just crashed into me. Yeah. So it was. Uh, didn't quite get to plan it. That, that ruined my winter. I mean, I was yeah. the crash we had was awful. I, I, I'm going to have the scars on my legs for the rest of my life, and oh, okay. it took it yeah. took a lot out of me. And couldn't really train for a week, and fighting jet lag, fighting humidity, and everything was, was awful. I don't I don't ever want to go back to the Caribbean again, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. If you had to choose, uh, and I, I know this is probably a little complex question, but road. Road, okay, yeah, yeah. In terms of uh, if you had a choice this year, you know, you're going to win the under 23 time trial uh, on the road, or next uh, early next year you could take a world title on the track. Would you have a choice? Road. Yeah, road. Um, I've just spent a lot of time on the track in the last two years, and I think it's run its course for me. Um, obviously, I'd, I'd like to go back and drop in now and then and mm. give, it, give it a whack if, if the program. Program like allowed it, but I do really, really want to push myself on the road more this year and make a name for myself on the road. Yeah, you talked about last year. You said the first few races were difficult. How do you feel twelve months later? Do you feel like you've made? Yeah, I'm in a much better place this like this like this time of year ago. I was only just coming back from the track. Uh, luckily this year the track world's a little bit easier, like a little bit earlier. So uh, I was able to start preparing for the road a lot earlier and get my training done. And, Look, and they weren't. They were this time. They were in Paris, so I didn't have to travel 25 days back from yeah, Colombia. Sure. So uh, it was a bit easier that way. And I think I'm going better for it. Mm. I've seen you tweeted a bit that you weren't you weren't altogether happy with the time trials you've done this year. That you didn't you didn't feel that you were really clicking. Um, is is that just getting over the track form? And, and, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, did, in, uh, I've only ridden one. Sorry, but I've done two time trials this year, and both have been affected by the track. Um, uh, in um, in Besage, the first TT of the year, I was just doing the I was doing that stage race just to get fit for the Worlds the, mm. in Paris, and I, I, for whatever reason, I just didn't have a good day that day. I was below power, and when I look back at, over the files in the SRM, it wasn't calibrated anyway. So, kind of like I was fighting a mental battle from the start, really. But yeah, I just didn't have a good day that day. Everyone has bad days, and then in the prologue in Tour of Normandy there last week, it was just the prologue that wasn't really for me. It was too short and to be good at a prologue. I need to, like, for me anyway. I had um, I need to be, I need to be racing for a few days beforehand just to get opened up. It was the first time I'd raced or ridden anger in four weeks, so it was, I was always going to be a bit rusty. So yeah. Curtis talked about. You know your time trial abilities, and he said that you do a lot of work with flexibility, etc. I mean, you, you have a very aero position, uh, a good position. Is this something that, I mean, is it the case that because you're good at something, it gives you extra motivation to try and find more seconds, more seconds all the time, or? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, because I mean, the reason why I ask is, I mean, before I was at a Leopard Trek training camp, or C, I think it was CSE actually at the time. Um, and Cancellara is obviously a fantastic time trialist, but he's incredibly flexible. And, and they were putting him through the the BG Fit testing, and yeah. you know he was he was noticeably flexible. And then you had the Schlecks who wouldn't be time trialists, and the flexibility was appalling. And you would almost imagine that they would be working extra hard at it, but but, but they weren't. You know, so I guess when you're already when you already have yeah, a talent in an area, it gives yeah. you the encouragement to it gives you the motivation to keep pushing it. Like I do. Uh, I don't actually do as much work on the on a TT bike as everyone thinks. I, as I always think I should be doing more, but sometimes I just I don't have the time. I, I've got to ride. I've got to race. So and between racing, you kind of want to be recovering rather than fisting yourself on a TT bike. So yeah, I, I, this year I'm going to put a lot more emphasis on my TT. Like I've got what motivates me is not winning the world last year. So I'm just thinking anytime 
the more time I spend on the TT bike, the less chance I have of losing a world championship by half a second again. So yeah, is that a see. huge motivation for you this year? Yeah, it is definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what what makes you such a good time I mean, obviously you have a great position. I mean, is it down to flexibility? Is it down to being meticulous about the setup? Is it down to whatever way your body works in terms of holding an effort? Or I well, just the type of rider I am. Uh, yeah. Bit easily, because <laughs> mm. uh, I, I, I've always liked TTs. Is what I grew up doing. Uh, so I was doing time trials before I was road racing, just with a local club. Just go out, smash ten miles, and think, oh, you see the progression every week. And then um, now I just kind of enjoy it. You know, just something, there's something about just being the fast person. Road, like there's not like nothing else gets in the way. No riders falling off in front of you. Mm. So yeah. sometimes there's the occasional star ramp up. When you say you're a you're oh, sure, yeah. When you say you're a, a diesel guy, are there certain things you need to do to improve in the road then? Um, As they... I say diesel lightly, I, uh, I'm, I just like that type of riding type thing. It's, it just suits me more. But I wouldn't yeah. wouldn't say I'm just stuck at doing that. Mm. Like I'm able to I'm able to kick and stuff. So yeah, um, but on the road, I mean, is there areas that you want to work on? Just the. Uh, Probably the climbing. Like I've lost a little bit of weight since last year, so yeah. I'm hoping this year I'll just carry through. And sure. like I'm never going to be a light, light guy. Like I'm, I'm happy with the weight I'm on now, so I'm just going to sustain it and just try and pick my power up all the time. So yeah. that's the way I'm going to approach Is that. Is there a particular rider when you look at the peloton that that I don't know about now because you're you're racing with these guys, but maybe when you're growing up that you identified with, or you said you'd like to have a career like that? Yeah, when I was growing up, I was. It was always Fabian Cancellara or Tom Boone and type thing, mm. uh, those kind of riders. And then more recently it's become Tony Martin. <laughs> yeah, sure, of course, yeah, yeah, all right. Um, do you have an idea of your racing schedule this year? Uh, I know I'm going straight into the, a, a race this weekend, um, Volta Limburg, and then I've got the under 23 Nations Cups. Um, got a little bit of a break then, um, just uh, again, a reset and start training again for the middle, heart, middle part of the season. And hopefully I get a ride in the Ras and Obviously the nationals, and I just take it bit by bit, and I've got the uh, the European, going to the Europeans, which it'd be nice to go there and get a TT title there as well. So mm, sure, yeah. When's your next road time trial or stage race time trial? Do you know? Probably the nationals. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, I I, I do a lot of time trials when I go home. Just every, every, I, there's um three or four time trials I can do in a week when I go home, so I'll just do three hours in the morning. Ride to a TT, do the TT, then ride home. So you get get the work done. Yeah, sure. I'm trying to remember. Have you done the Ross before? Or? No, I've, I've never ridden the Ross. No. Yeah. Heard a lot of bad things about it, though, <laughs> or good things at the same time. But yeah. I, it's definitely something I want to do this year. Yeah, sure. Um, and does the route? I mean, the route is is kind of different to other years. It's going to be more, I guess, aggression and uh, high speed, etc. Yeah, is that... I've heard it's a little bit more flat this year than previous yeah. years, so. Sure. Should make for some good race. I hope it's windy anyway. Yeah, I'm sure you'd love a TT in there. So. Yeah, they need a TT in there. <laughs> Eight days without a TT. It's like, yeah. why? Sure. Yeah. And, a, and without a rest day. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. Um, looking at the, the year overall, I mean, do you have a, an overall goal for it that, that you want to um, achieve by the end of the season? Yeah, I want to go back and like, a big goal of mine this year is the elite TT at the Nationals. Um, mm. Obviously, I'm going to do my best to retain the, the road race jersey. Then, but the the under twenty three Europeans, if I can get get a medal there or get a title there in the TT, um, and then about the world as well. So some demons to put away there. Yeah, sure. And in terms of moving teams, I mean, ideally, would you like next year to step up a level? If I could, yeah, I'll take whatever comes. Yeah, I feel like I'd like to move on out of the uh, the continental category up to maybe pro pro continental or even world tour if the option comes along. Yeah, it's hard to. I mean, I think you're still twenty. Is that correct? Yeah, twenty. Yeah, yeah. so it's hard to I'd say, yeah, to, to picture that, you know, because yeah, you've already I, done quite a bit. And, I, yeah, like a lot of people have said to me, "Who you signed for?" I was like, "No one." And I, I'm, I always say, "I'm only twenty And like, you see, these guys are racing. I've grown up watching them race, and I just think I'm nowhere near that level. And hopefully, you know, if we just keep chipping away. I would might get there one day. Yeah, but no, I'm, year uh, on year. You know, you can see with guys in the past that there is, I think until about 27, 28, there is a natural improvement. Yeah, you know? so I'm hoping I can just do enough to find my way into like a, a team that will take me on. I can look after me the first few years and then hopefully I can continue to improve. 
Yeah, and presumably, you know, given your age and uh, staying here for another year is a good thing. That, you know, you're with the setup that you you know. And yeah, that's that's one of the that's like I, I always said from the start. I I would really want to do as many years as I can a team like this. I mean, we have the program, we have the setup, for, and like the staff. Everyone speaks English, and the guys are raced with the guys are raced with the last four or five years as juniors. So it's it's almost like a big family here. Like, mm. um, and it was. You know, it was no brainer. Like the program we have, we ride the same race as a pro continental team, and we get exposed to that level. So, whenever we do turn pro, then it's not a complete shock to the system. Yeah, and Dan Martin did the same thing. He was offered a contract by by Garmin a year before he ultimately went there, and he decided that yeah. it was better to bide his time. So I think yeah, it's, I think it's always sensible just to take your time. Like, I, I'm 20, and hopefully I've got another 15 years left at this level mm. at minimum. Yeah, sure. So, I'll take it. I'll take. I'll take my time.